Hi, I'm David Dunlop, and you're in the Attic Gallery with me here in Camas, Washington. I'm glad you can be with me. I've got a show in this particular spot in the gallery. It's a beautiful gallery. You should come down and see the show. And here is a real panoply of different subjects. They interest me for the fact of their difference. You can see I take you into a tangle of woodland, and we've got the tangle, which all of these uh, images have roots in art history. For example, this kind of tangle reminded me of the Laocoon of ancient Rome or the snakes from Medusa's head. And so there are these subliminal ideas that have occurred to me in the pursuit of the image that I'm painting. What's up here? And up here is something that is a little more uh, bucolic. And being bucolic, it offers a sense of serenity and the association with uh, silence or something soft and infinite. So we go into this pale infinity in the back and move forward into substance. In Chinese landscape painting, there's this idea of substance absence. Right. And here we have substance to absence, something into nothing. And that transition allows us to experience space. And that, that ex transition isn't just with edge acuity to ambiguity, but it is also with color contrast and with uh, beautiful. value shifts. And subliminally, there is the serpentine, as you can see here, and again, reaching back to antiquity, whether it's the serpent in the Garden of Eden, and so we're, uh, this always this quest for some Eden-esque space, or it's that serpentine that goes back to the Serpentina, that's Italian, that's Latin, or the serpentine shape, which is, of course, the S. It's one of our letters. And in ancient Greece, it's the shape of the river that goes through Arcadia for the ancient Greeks, which is in Turkey. And you can see there are other images, too, here, where architectural and architectonic, with the forms here, or windswept. Here's that gestalt of common fate, where everything seems to have a unified motion, which has only held inside of the picture plane because of a couple of contrary uh, breaks to stop you from sliding out of the picture so you can come back and begin again, come back and begin again, but participate in the movement and the rhythm of the shapes. There's some color contrast, there's translucence, and there's abstract patterns. And the abstract patterns allow us to see things in ambiguity. In other words, to project the scene that we're looking at rather than to have a narration of this is what this object is. It's a place for a psychological event to happen that invites your participation into the deep space. Now your work is a lot of variety. You know, I was going through the gallery and looking at the show you've got here and then the works you've had here in the past. You've been with the gallery for about 30 years, correct? Long time. Right. And, and, I, and it was so fortunate for me to f find the relationship here. It was through family here in the Willamette Valley that okay. I became acquainted with the, the existence of this gallery. And my brother-in-law, who is here, he's wearing the visor over there, my brother-in-law, where is he at? Max mm -hmm. Hafer, okay, he's got, got a farm. Got it, got it, got it, got it. He raises filberts. Okay. He had a friend who was a ceramicist who showed with Diana. Got it. And the gallery and said, maybe you should go up and visit and talk. And it's been a delightful relationship for these many years with many shows and it's lots of joy in, the, in my relationship to this terrific gallery. David, on the other side of the other gallery here, you've got cityscapes of New York and other places? I do. Let's talk about it's New York City. Okay, what do we got here? And here we're in Midtown New York. Okay. Times Square, then Midtown, Times Square, Midtown. Right. And the reason is we've got these, the mountains in the city are buildings. Right. The atmosphere of the city is the same as the atmosphere in the gorge we have this vaporous atmosphere, and the energy is the kind of energy you would expect in nature too, where we see motion, we sense motion, and the way we sense motion is through blur. And so I give things with more edge articulation or less, 
layering them so you get a sense of the textures and quality and kinetic activity of city life. It's not something that is at all static any more than nature is. And I'm always trying to convey a sense of rhythm, motion, pattern so that we feel the movement. You do, and it's, and like I said earlier, you're different styles of, of art. Now, this is acrylic, or what is this on? This is oil on... Okay. Oil, okay. Oil on an enamel baked aluminum composite. And nicely framed. Thank you. These are, uh, the frames are faux float frames. Very and good. the colors actually uh, reflect into the side of the flame, which creates a subtle reverberation. Now, how long have you been an artist? Oh, that's the same question that everybody asks, and it's a fundamental question. We all start out as artists, we all start out as singers, we all start out as dancers, and what happens? We stop skipping, we stop singing, except in the shower. Uh, and so I was in the high chair, just like you were, moving my food around, making patterns, saying, this is fun. Only I wasn't articulating that, I was just experiencing that. And that just, continued to happen as I continued to experiment with paint, fingers, materials, whatever it was, uh, and became a painter just through just the pleasure, the joy, the rapture of experiencing materials and the visual world and transmuting my feelings into paint. And now you do this full time? I do. And you also teach, is that correct? I do teach occasionally. I do workshops. I've done this year, I just, uh, two weeks ago, came back from Huntsville, Alabama, from teaching at the Huntsville Museum of Art for a workshop, and I'll be going to different places. But I, less and less, I do Zoom classes at daviddunlop.com. Oh, very good. And that, I invite you to come because I do uh, lecture, art history, neuroscience, psychology and perception, as well as a demonstration. And I'll show you how. Okay. Other people, George O'Keefe for somebody else painting, and then I'll do a, a demonstration for about an hour, and then if you want, you can have a critique by me using digital tools. In other words, I draw on your painting digitally and say, you might want to do this with perspective or something else. So right. I love to teach. You can already tell I love to talk. <laughs> now, you also won an Emmy Award. Let's talk I, about that. When, when did that happen and for what? For well, what? I, I had the good fortune of having someone walk into one of my classrooms and say, you know, I think you'd be good on television. I go, hello? Okay, well, what do we need to do? And we worked out a pilot and did this with the pilot with Connecticut Public Television. And they said, we don't want to do local, we want to go national. He said, so do we. And, then, <laughs> and we, we then made a series of shows where the idea was, let's go to the places where famous artists paint. Monet at Giverny, Van Gogh at St. Paul uh, de Mossoul, the hospital in uh, saint marie en provence in France, or Cézanne, where he painted the mountain of saint mont saint victoire in Aix-en-Provence. So we went to these places. I studied how they painted, what they were thinking, what were their historical influences, who were their friends, what were they reading, what was life like at that moment? And then we take you back in time so that you can experience a reenactment of life as Cezanne or Monet. What show is this called? What, what this, program? Oh, sure. Now, the series is called Landscapes Through Time with David Dunrock. And, and it's on public television. Public television. We've done a couple of series. Some of those now are on YouTube. And you can access them through the website, daviddunlop.com. Yes. And when we were nominated for some awards, I was blown away. We were nominated the first season for Best Director and Best Writer and for the, the series. Sure. And what happened is, you're, you're there and you get this call. My director said, David, we're nominated for the, these national Emmys. And you're like, I am gobsmacked. Now, not possible. And then who are we up against? And among the people we were up against was Ellen DeGeneres. And I thought, okay, we Ellen's, don't have a, we don't have a wow. chance. I mean, there were others that were pretty impressive. Right. But I thought, Ellen DeGeneres, there is no way. First of all, Ellen has seven writers. 
Me. And we won. That's and fantastic. As Connie said, my producer, director, editor, sure. Connie Simmons, she didn't know who you were then, but she knows who we are now. So we shared the National Emmy. It was the first one Connecticut television had ever won. And when, what year was that? I don't remember the year. It was just a few years ago. Right. And we did another series. In the next series, we were nominated again. I thought, oh my God, we're going to be nominated again. This is impossible. But I knew this time we didn't have a prayer. Because if I tell you who it was we were up against, you go, no, you didn't have a prayer. I'll tell you now. It was Oprah Winfrey. Oh my. <laughs> oh yeah. As anybody in the business says, you're not going to beat Oprah. Right. But it was an honor to be in the same category of something she did. Well, congratulations. And so the series, the first series began and it when? It began what? W when did it begin? I wish I could tell you. The years kind of blurred together during COVID. Yeah, that, that's, about, that's true. About 10 years ago. Okay. Nine or 10 years ago. And then we did another one maybe five years after that and so forth. Did, and you, we, en did you enjoy that? Oh, I love doing it. Is another that's, series coming? Oh, the funding for this is so difficult. Yeah. You all, unless you're this old house. Right. Or a very popular program, you have to raise your own funding. On sure. PBS. And it's, it, it's in a Promethean task. So I'm going to speculate probably not. And it's exhausting, the research and the travel and the rest of that. And we're very, and we've got a number of other projects we're doing right now anyway. Such as? Well, I, we do it with the Zoom programs and other things. I, we're doing programs, and those programs we're putting up both on YouTube and on our own website. And I write blog posts, and you, they're free. And you can come and join in with that and get an experience of art history, how it was made, and how perception, cognition, recognition work. So I hope you'll join me in some of these ventures because they're really fun. Well, we'd be happy to. Now, let's do a shout out to the gallery. Oh, of course. This wonderful gallery, the Attic Gallery here at Canvas, Washington. I was with them way back in Portland where they are one of the oldest galleries in Portland. Moved here to Canvas, beautiful Canvas, and I hope you get to come to Canvas because this gallery and the shops and restaurants at Canvas are exceptional, unique, and they have a cultural synthesis, a synergy that is an energy that makes this area especially exciting. And you don't want to miss that excitement. It's pretty Here, great, huh? At this gallery, which is the Attic Gallery, you can meet Tomer or Diana, the, or the original proprietor and mother of Maria, who runs most of the show now. And I hope you'll come see my show and so many others because there's so much exciting art, sculpture, ceramics, glass, all here. Well, enjoy your time in Camus. Welcome. How long are you going to be here? Well, actually, I leave. I have to go back on Sunday. So okay. it's a uh, quick trip Friday. So not, not here for much longer. But I've been enjoying Oregon and Washington for this past week, as I always do when I get to come out here and be with the wonderful people of Canvas. David, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure for me. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much.